Thank you for the introduction, Andres, and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Let me go ahead and launch my screen share now. As Andres mentioned, my name is Brittany, and I have a really fun job here at Loom because I get to work with our customers right at the beginning of your journey and not only help you understand what is Loom and how to Loom, but today we're going to be diving into why Loom is so impactful, especially for PM teams, where to Loom, when to Loom, and how Loom fits into your existing tech stack. Using Loom is going to make you about 75% more productive with the tools that you do have. So today I'm going to be talking about all of your favorite tools and how to use them together with Loom. I'm going to be throwing out a lot of prompts to you all in the chat, and I would love to hear from you all as we are going along today. So do feel free to add any questions you have to the chat. I'll try to answer those in real time if I can, and I will also allow about 10 to 15 minutes at the end for anyone to come off of mute. Now, before we get started, I would love to know from you all in the chat, scale of one to five, how familiar are you with Loom? One being, I have no idea, never seen it before. Two might be, I've seen a recording before, I've never tried to record. Five might be, I'm a pro. Let me know in the chat, one to five, one is not familiar, five is super familiar. Four and two, okay. One, love it. Now, whether you have never seen Loom before or you are a seasoned pro, I promise you are all in the right spot today. You will walk away with an aha moment today, I promise you, and a moment where you're going to feel like, wow, I can really see how this is going to be transformative in my role. So do me a favor. If you have that moment, if you see a feature today, let me know in the chat. I love to hear um, as you guys have those, those moments as we go along. So here's what we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to meet Loom. For those of you who haven't met Loom, I'm going to be showing you a lot of real life examples of how you can use Loom in your roles in the product world. I'll be teaching you how to get started. It's really, really easy to do. You'll probably hear me say several times, Loom is really delightfully simple to use. And I think you're going to see that today as we conduct several demos of all of our features. I'm going to be talking to you about our different recorders and when to use each of them and showing you all of our different features. And I'm going to be showing you our top tips and tricks and best practices, how to get as many people as possible to engage with your Loom and view your Loom. And I'm also going to be, give you guys a sneak peek of some of our new releases. Now, we just released a series of awesome new features, which I'll show you today. And we also have a couple in the works that aren't out yet. And you guys are going to get a sneak peek of those today. OK, everyone, let's get started with meeting Loom. All right. At its core, Loom is a video communication tool for async work. Now, up here in the right-hand corner, this is your quintessential Loom. It is a recording of your screen and your camera bubble. And that's what's really special about a Loom rather than just sending you know, some other sort of async communication is that you have your face attached to your voice and to your message, and there's no chance your tone is going to be misunderstood. When I first saw this quadrant at our summit last year, I was like, oh, I'm snagging that because this really helped me to understand where Loom fits into my existing tool tech stack and when it's the best time to use Loom and when is the best time to use other tools. So let's talk about some of these more traditional forms of communication, which most of us are familiar with. So traditionally, if we are going to be communicating asynchronously, we're probably doing that today in something like an email. You can email somebody at all hours of the night, and there's not this pressure to respond right away to an email. But let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know in the chat. Have you ever found yourself several paragraphs into an email? You find yourself rereading it multiple times, maybe you're spell checking it, then you check for grammar, and then you start asking, is there any chance my message could be misunderstood? Now, chances are, if you have a long form email like that, there is definitely a chance your message is going to be misunderstood, especially in your role as PM. So if you're trying to announce a new release or explain to your support team how to you know, support any bugs that might be going on in a new release, and you're trying to explain that in text form in an email, there's a good chance your message could be misunderstood. In those cases, it's a much better option to simply hit record, one click, start recording, 
there's zero chance your message or tone is going to be misunderstood. Now let's talk about our synchronous text communication, such as a Slack message. Slack is great for one to two sentence bite-sized pieces of communication. It is not great for delivering something that you want attention on or something to be delivered with some weight to it. Let me know in the chat if this has ever happened to you. You have a new product release or a feature enhancement. You are really excited to announce it to your org. You dress it up in Slack. You add emojis, maybe some movement in there, some exclamation points, some bold, some highlights. And you're really excited to get eyes on it and to announce it, but your announcement kind of falls flat. And somebody else types a Slack message and yours gets covered up and lost in the shuffle. In that case, it would be a much better option to simply, again, one click, start recording, record a loom. You can embed that in a Slack message, and I promise your message is going to be delivered in a much more impactful way. You're going to get a lot better engagement on it by having a video embed in your Slack message. Then, of course, we have our synchronous video communication like Zoom. That's not going anywhere. Zoom is awesome when we truly need to meet live. But we're going to talk more today about you know, to loom or not to loom, is there a chance that this live meeting could actually be a loom instead? Could I delight my whole team by canceling the live meeting that we all have on our calendars and simply send them a five minute loom? And by the way, they can watch that in 1.5x speed and watch it quickly when they want to or go back and rewatch it later. Okay, so start to think about that. Now, a lot of times we determine, yes, we do need to have that live meeting. It's really important. But one of our best, I would say, entry level use cases for Loom is the meeting pre watch. So start to ask yourself, yes, I need to have this live meeting. Can I make the best use of our live meeting time together by sending a quick pre watch ahead of time? I use this a lot in my role in customer success. If I am going to be meeting with a new customer, for example, and I want to ensure I get the right people on the call, so I communicate the agenda in a pre-watch, I want to infuse some excitement into the meeting. So I throw, throw up some confetti in my pre-watch. I make sure my face is in there so it's a much more personal touch. It's going to improve your show up rates to meetings and make sure everybody comes to the table ready to have a truly productive live time together. Okay, so that's where Loom comes in, asynchronous video communication, and we're going to be double clicking on that today. Here are just some of the reasons why PM tools love to use Loom, and I, being on the other end of things in CS, love that my PM team uses Loom because it makes it really effective for me to gather the information that they are trying to convey in a way that is very digestible for me. Now, as adults, we only retain about 10% of things that we read and about 20% of things that we hear. So if today you are um, documenting, let's say you know, you're documenting information about a product or a feature and you're sharing written documentation, with your internal teams or with your customers, we're only going to retain about 10% of that. If we're talking about it on a live meeting, especially if it's a large format meeting like an all hands, we're only going to retain 20% of that. You can instead record a loom and we are now going to retain 50 to 75% of that information. Most people know without even you know, looking at statistics that video is the number one most engaging content type think about you know what the kids are doing these days with the TikToks and the reels we are really interested in viewing videos so why not infuse this into your product management food for thought so here's a question we can all start asking ourselves if you guys want to print this out and put it on your wall i won't judge i have it on my wall too because i find myself asking this question even today working at loom and here's how i determine what's the best way to deliver my message First question, is the tone of your message important? If the tone is at all important, record a loom, have your face, have your voice attached to your message, your tone's not gonna be misunderstood. We always say, you know, don't, don't fight over a text or don't say anything important over a text. Well, the same thing applies to communicating at work. This is a good way to save yourself from being misunderstood. Next question, do you need any visuals to explain? If you do, just record a loom. It's so easy. You don't have to worry about preparing a slide deck or taking screenshots or marking up anything like that. It's gonna save you a lot of time, I promise. And the last question is, can you communicate this in less than a paragraph? Remember, one to two sentence 
bite-sized pieces of information, great for Slack, great for MS Teams, anything longer than that, record a loom. So here is a little challenge for everybody, and this is a great way to start using Loom if you haven't yet. Go ahead and look at your calendar. See if there's just one meeting this week or next week that you could try canceling, no, it sounds scary, cancel the meeting and send a Loom instead. I want you to see what the response is to that, to uh, the audience that you share it with. And I promise you, they are gonna feel real delighted to have that canceled meeting. If you don't find one that can be canceled, is there one that you could supplement with a pre-watch? Try recording a one minute pre-watch ahead of time. Send it ahead, communicate the agenda, infuse some excitement, make sure you get all the right folks on the call and make sure they come prepared to share all of their ideas. If you have any ideas so far um, about how you might start using Loom in your work as PMs, let me know in the chat, but we'll be diving more into specifically how to use Loom. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to be conducting a live demo for you guys of Loom, so I'm excited to share that with you. But let me share with you just how easily it is to get your message across using Loom. Step one, one-click recording, up pops your cam bubble and your screen, and you are ready to go. We also have amazing instant editing tools. They're really delightfully simple to use. You don't need to be any sort of video editor in order to use them, super user-friendly. Next thing you're going to do is share your Loom. And you can share your um, Loom anywhere far and wide. I'll be showing you all of our different sharing options today. You're also going to notice that Loom integrates natively with a lot of your favorite tools. You're going to notice if you paste a Loom URL in a lot of different platforms, it's automatically going to create that embedded thumbnail preview for it, which has motion in the beginning of you waving. That's really nice. Now, another thing that's really special about Loom is this creates an amazing sense of personal connection, whether this be with coworkers, with prospects, or with customers that we haven't really had in recent years when we are working remote and hybrid. Um, even on meetings, it is hard to get, um, you know, the authentic human element that we are really missing. What's special about Loom and sharing a Loom with somebody is there are a lot of options for them to interact with that content. Um, they can do this by adding timestamp comments. They can do this by adding emojis. Um, they can add their own video replies. Remember how I just shared with you our adult learning um, brains and how we only retain about 10% of what we read. Now, the most important thing when sharing a message is you want to turn your viewers into actively involved participants. When you do that by giving somebody the ability to add an emoji or a comment, they are going to retain about 95% of that message. They'll be actively listening to your message. So it's a really fun and authentic way to connect um, at work. Loom is going to help you guys, I know you're gonna love this, create reusable institutional knowledge. Because you are recording things, you can say it once, share it a thousand times. All of a sudden, by recording it, you have this really context-rich video documentation. Use this on your help center. Use this in your internal company wiki. We consider a Loom to be evergreen or reusable if it is still receiving views five days after you have recorded it. And in fact, about 95% of our users say they are using Loom in that way. It's really great to amass this great video documentation, great for new hires um, and embedding anywhere um, that you would typically share text communication. Okay, I'm probably going to say several times this is my favorite thing about Loom, but I have a lot of favorites. So one of my very favorite things about Loom is the second you hit done recording, your Loom is instantly rendered and available to share. I'll show you what that looks like on our live demo. So when you hit stop recording, it's instantly going to pop up your video. You can share it right away. There is no downtime, no waiting time for it to render. So if you guys are pre-recording something today, perhaps you are already working a little bit asynchronously by recording something in a Zoom or recording something in QuickTime, it's gonna take a while for you to get that email from Zoom letting you know that your recording is rendered and ready to share. And the sharing experience really is not great when you're sharing 
a, uh, a Zoom video, for example. Your uh, viewer doesn't have any option to interact with that content, and it's not, you know, a very fun great experience for them. We have a feature available on our enterprise plan called Zoom ingestion. And essentially what happens here is if I record something in Zoom, it automatically uploads to Loom for me as a Loom recording. And it's a much better experience for the viewer if you share the Loom recording. You're also gonna be able to see analytics on that video. Who's viewed it? How long did they watch it for? Did they click through to your CTA? What percent of time did they watch it for? So that is a very cool feature of Loom. Um, if you don't have our enterprise plan, you can still upload any videos of your choosing into Loom. So you'll click new video and you'll be able to add any you know, MP4 or video file from your computer into Loom and turn it into a Loom video. If you haven't signed up for Loom yet, let me talk to you about how to get started. It's really quick and easy to do. You can go to loom.com and you're going to see several big buttons that say get started for free and you can try loom out on our free forever starter plan. Now there are a couple limitations on that plan, such as a five minute um, time limit per loom and 25 loom um, recordings maximum um, per that account. You can upgrade to our business plan in a self-serve way um, if you'd like to remove those limitations. Um, and then we also have an enterprise plan available if your organization needs things such as SSO, SKIM for provisioning and deprovisioning, and some additional security and privacy settings. We have three different recorders available, and this is a question I get a lot is which of these um, recordings should I be or which of these recorders should I be using depending on the type of loom I'm recording. So I use each of these daily in a little bit of a different way. Our desktop application is my personal favorite. It's our most robust recorder. Um, what I love about the desktop app is it has a drawing tool. If you ever need to mark up your screen, which I imagine you guys do working in the product world, the desktop app is great for that. It also has some additional fun features like if, um, different frames for your camera bubble and a brand new feature called speaker notes, which is like a teleprompter. Our Chrome extension, a little bit more lightweight, awesome for recording on the fly especially if you're already working in your Chrome browser. We have a brand new feature in here called the Blur tool. So if you're sharing anything externally, um, that is a, a good one to use so you can blur out different pieces on your screen. Lastly, we have our mobile app. And I know you guys are going to love this in product. Have you ever wanted to record something on your phone before? Perhaps you want to record how your platform looks on a mobile device. You can hit record on your mobile and you can record anything going on on your mobile screen. So I record looms all the time in my mobile app. Maybe I'm showing my husband how to use a certain new app on the phone. Um, so it's really cool. I also use my mobile app to view looms on the fly as well as receive any um, notifications or for fun things like a cooking demo or a quick loom of my kids. This is where your recorders are going to live. You're going to see your uh, Chrome extension up here. Be sure to pin it to the toolbar. Um, really important that you download the Chrome extension if you are a Gmail user. This is going to allow you to embed Looms in your email. Really easy. And here's our desktop app down here at the bottom. You're going to be able to record your screen, your cam, or both. The quintessential Loom is the both option where you have your little cam bubble and your lovely screen. We do have some other options in between, which I'll show you guys today, um, such as our canvas option if you don't have a visual to display, or a photo instead of your cam if you're having a bad hair day. We get it. Okay, enough talking about Loom. Let's show you Loom. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and stop my Zoom camera. And I'm going to pop open my Loom camera. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys my Chrome. My Chrome recorder. OK, here is my cam bubble. There's a couple options that I can set up before I hit start recording. So I'm going to want to make sure I'm recording the right desktop or tab. You can also select only a certain area of your screen if you'd like to do that. Of course, check that your audio um, and video are working as you'd like. And here's the blur feature that I mentioned that's currently um, in beta. And it's going to allow you to blur out anything you want um, 
on your screen. Um, it gets pretty granular, so you can blur out even just like tiny little things. If I'm ever recording a loom over an email, for example, which I'm often doing, I'll be typing that long form email like we talked about, and then I'll be like, this should be a loom instead, and I just start recording right in there. I blur out you know, the folders within my Gmail account. You do need to add your blur in your pre-production here uh, before you start recording. It's not something you can add on afterwards in your post-production. I'm gonna give you guys a real life example of how you might use Loom. So I'm gonna do this in a little bit of a role play day in the life style. And I will also make sure um, my cam bubble is how I'd like it. Now you can make your cam bubble larger or smaller. I typically recommend starting out your loom with a larger cam bubble, and then I will shrink it down and move it as I start recording. You can move it around as much as you want. Um, make sure that your cam bubble is not dead in the center of your screen. That's because when it renders, instantly. You're going to have a play button and it's right in the middle. You don't want it to cover up your, your face and your smile. In the Chrome extension, you have some different background effects. You can blur your background here, or you can add one of these colorful and fun backgrounds to use as well. We have some additional options for this in the desktop recorder. All right, I'm going to hit start recording. It's going to have me confirm the screen that I'd like. I'm going to get a three, two, one countdown, and don't forget to wave. Hey everybody, I am currently working on some updates to this slide deck and I would love your help if you can come in here and make a couple edits to these slides for me. The first edits I would love for you to make are here on slide 12. I think this is um, the old view of our website. Can you please grab me a fresh screenshot and put that in here? I would also like on this slide to be able to talk a little more to our plans. If you have some visuals I can add, that would be super helpful. Here on slide 13, um, is this still uh, the correct um, web store look? I think that we might have updated this logo. And lastly, on slide 14, we currently only have this mock-up of a Mac. I would love to add one uh, for a PC too. I will link this slide deck in the CTA for you. Go ahead and click that button so you can come in here quick and easy. And thanks so much. Talk to you later, bye. Okay, remember, instant render, dun da 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 it's done. It's ready to share. So this is what your loom looks like the second you hit done recording. We're going to come back to this loom in a couple minutes and we're going to move into talking about editing, um, but I want to show you a couple of other cool recording features first. Anyone having their aha moment yet? Can you start to think about how you might use this in your product roles? All right, so in this next example, I want to show you our canvas option. Now, while you will typically be presenting some sort of resource on your screen, like a slide deck or your product, something like that, there might be times where you just want to talk about something um, in a meeting pre-watch, for example. So in that case, you don't have to go out of your way to create some sort of pretty visual to put on the back of your screen. Loom's got you covered with our Canvas tool. You have this both in the desktop recorder as well as the Chrome extension. So let's launch that now. And I'm going to show you all your different options here. So you can add different backgrounds. So there's different solid colors you can choose. There's these different fun templates you can use. And as you can see on my screen, I've added text to mine. So if you want to just have a couple high level bullet points, which is great for a meeting pre-watch, or if you're launching a product and you want to just highlight some bullet points to talk about, um, that would be a good option for you to use. And then we also have some other fun templates in here that you might want to use, like breaking news, we finally released that new release, or hey, I'm a new team member. Um, this is my personal favorite to use. So let me go ahead and show you how I would record a pre-watch in Loom. I'm gonna put my text back on. Now this text is sticky, so it's gonna stick in here until you delete it out and add new text to it. I'm gonna get another three, two, one countdown. And I'll show you what it looks like. Don't forget to wave. Hey team, I am super excited for our meeting tomorrow. Thought I would send along this quick meeting pre-watch so that you guys can come prepared. Start thinking about this overnight. And I would really love to hear from all of you guys on the following three topics tomorrow. Number one, we're gonna talk about our Q1 OKRs. We have just launched those into a new product tracker. Wanna get everybody's feedback on those. I'm gonna link those in the CTA. Please take a quick look at those ahead of time. The next thing we're gonna do is a little brainstorm around how we are currently conducting launch, launches and betas. So CS team, we wanna hear how are we doing 
in the PM world at getting you guys the information you need in order to communicate product launches and betas to your customers. Come prepared to share your thoughts. And lastly, we're finally getting around to our little bit delayed Q4 retro. Thanks everybody and see you tomorrow. Bye. There we go. We're gonna have an instant rendering and we're gonna have our Loom meeting pre-watch that is ready to go. Okay, question in the chat. Quick question. The demos Brittany just did are all still just using the Chrome extension, correct? Yes, that's right, Veronica. The first two demos I did were in the Chrome extension. The first was recording over a um, my slide deck here, and the second was using the Chrome extension and the Canvas feature. And now I am going to show you guys the desktop application. So the first thing you're going to notice is this pops up is my favorite feature. This is the frame option. Now, you have some additional options in here that you don't have in your Chrome extension, and these are frames. These are seasonal, so you're going to see fun different ones pop up. Does this one resonate with you guys? Bug report? You ever have to report on any any bugs? Or perhaps you want to say I'm on vacation. This is my this is my Loom out of office message, and I typically love this flower frame here. Now I'm gonna give you guys my top tip for you in Loom. Leave your camera on. It is really so much more impactful when you're delivering a message to have your face attached to your presentation. That being said, there might be times where you're like, I really don't feel like being on camera today. Loom's got you covered because we have a couple of cool options that I think you're going to love and I use here all the time. So remember, you can make your camera bubble larger and like really out of the way. If you're really not feeling it, just make it small, move it out of the way. You'll also notice if my skin looks nice and clear here, that's our touch up my appearance filter. So I've got mine cranked all the way up. It will adjust for low light and it'll make you look super smooth. My husband was using my Loom account the other day and he's like, oh, my beard looks so flawless, like please turn this down. So you can toggle that up and down um, and add that fun filter to your loom. If you really, really, really don't feel like being on cam for the day, you can also click on this little handy guy here and that's gonna add your photo instead. So you still accomplish having your face attached. It's just, you know, a photo of better hair days. We get it, we've all been there. Okay, let me start recording here in our, um, desktop app and a really cool thing we have in here are called speaker notes and these act like a teleprompter so here's what I like to do I put my foot my uh, cam bubble smack dab behind the teleprompter the speaker notes here and it will not show up in the rendering so it just really looks like I know what I'm talking about I'm going to show you how it works start recording Hey there, my name is Brittany and I'm one of Loom's customer success leaders. Today I want to show you our brand new speaker notes feature, which will sort of act like a teleprompter for you to read while recording. There you go, guys. That's how that works. Really cool. I'll show you what that looks like in the rendering in a minute. Ready for tip number two? And this is a big one. Leave your errors in your Loom. If you stumble on your words, if you say something funny, if you've got ums and ahs, keep rolling with it. I promise it makes your loom so much more engaging to watch. Your viewers are going to enjoy getting to see the real you. This should not be robotic communication. This is about real human authentic communication. You might even get a laughing emoji out of it. However, there might be times where your loom needs to be just a little more polished. And this would be for those cases where you're creating those evergreen looms, the looms that are going to live on your website and 2000 people are going to see and are going to be sharing with other people. And you want to polish up just a little bit more. You have a couple options available first while you're recording, as well as in your editing suite to polish up your loom. I'm going to show you those now. OK, so while recording, here's a couple of things you can do. Number one, you've got a restart button. If you, you know, pronounced something wrong and you really just need to restart your loom, click this handy dandy restart button. You're gonna get another three, two, one countdown, wave and smile and nobody will know. You also have a pause button. If you wanna pause, maybe edit your speaker notes, go get a snack, come back later, you can pause your loom. Now you can also just trash it, burn it, click the delete button, cancel it and start over fresh if you want to do that. Um, what I might recommend doing though is stopping your loom, letting your loom render, and you can record multiple clips. We have a stitching feature available. You can stitch up to 150 clips together. So don't feel like you need to get it all right in 
one take. If I'm recording an evergreen webinar, for example, I'll record that in 20 different clips. And what's great about that is if I break it up and record different pieces of um, the product, if we get a new release, I can yank one uh, clip out and pop a new clip in. Stitching is also great if you need to have multiple people presenting. So you can have multiple PMs present, stitch it all together into one nice package. So those are my tips for polishing up your loom while you're recording. A few other things I'll show you in the desktop app before we move on. You've got a handy dandy drawing tool here. You've got different colors. You can mark up your screen and these will stick on your screen for about three seconds here and then disappear. So you can be like, here it is, pretty fun. And of course we have confetti, which is a great thing to uh, throw up when you're talking about something you are excited about. There's a keyboard shortcut uh, for that command and control and a C. One more time, one more confetti for the road. Okay, let's go ahead and stop our loom and it will instantly render for us again. So cool. Okay, let's move on and talk about editing. If there are any additional questions about recording, let me know in the chat and I'll try to get to those. And I'm gonna move on and talk about editing. Okay, you guys, we have a brand new feature coming out. It just got released to us internally. I was, yes, the markup features in the desktop app. Thanks Veronica for the question. This new feature I am obsessed with. I posted in our Slack channel today that it's maybe the best thing that's ever happened to me. And this is automatic titling. We are taking advantage of AI and the second your loom renders, it added a title for me. It, yeah, whoa, right, Glory? Mind is blown. I was like, this makes me sound so much more polished and cool. I'm coming up with all these creative titles, but I'm not coming up with them at all. It listened to my audio. I was talking about slide deck updates. It even added an emoji for me. Mind blowing, really cool stuff. Ready to have your mind even more blown? It's also gonna create an auto summary for you. So it says, I'm working on some ed updates to a slide deck. I need your help on slide 12, blah, 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 slide 13, slide 14. I'll link it in the CTA. So it's not like the whole transcript. We have that too. It's just a summary, which I can paste into an email or something like that. Very, very cool. Um, this will be coming to a loom screen near you guys in the near future. We are currently piloting it here internally, but it's the best thing that I have ever seen. So let's come into this loom and make a couple of additional edits. Um, let's make some suggestions and a couple little tweaks to this subject line. So of course you wanna make your subject line um, the, the subject of your loom and exactly what you're talking about here. I also like to indicate in my title how long the loom is. And the reason for that is if I'm sharing a loom with somebody, you know, you don't want to click into a loom thinking it's a one minute watch and you can watch it between meetings and it's actually 16 minutes. Now, as a best practice, I want everybody to try to keep their looms under five minutes long. Three minutes is even better. The shorter your loom is, our research shows, the better engagement you are going to see on it. So indicate in your title how long the loom is so people before they click on it will know Oh, hey, I got a minute to watch that. Um, and what I also like to do in my subject line is suggest a playback speed. Um, this is really important if you're sharing with people who aren't necessarily like using Loom on a day to day. Um, they might not know that they can up the playback speed. So we're going to do like a little sneaky enablement up here in the subject line and say, watch in 1.5x speed. That's a good trick to get people to watch your loom because they're like, oh, I can watch this in 1.5 XP. I, I've got time for that. I can click into this message and digest this during my day. So there is your suggestion for your title. OK, and you're going to see when you watch it in a, um, a playback speed here, um, it's going to tell you just how much side time you are saving. We are all about saving you guys time here at Loom. Um, so you're going to see directly there exactly the saving. Now I mentioned to keep your loom under five minutes whenever possible. If your loom is gonna be on the longer side and longer than five minutes, what I would recommend doing is add time stamped chapters into your description. So what you can do here is you can say um, at the 30 second mark, I'm talking about updates to slide 14. Okay, now when I refresh my screen, and that is going to turn into a clickable timestamp for me, and it will take the viewer right to that point. So oh, that's a great visual. Uh, so if you are going to be recording like an evergreen demo or a product walkthrough, 
add those chapters in so different people can access the Loom, you know, at the part that is interesting to them. Now your Loom's private just to you until you choose to share it out. So we're gonna make a few more edits here before we share it. You heard me mention a couple of times, I'm gonna add a link in the CTA. Anytime you're talking about a particular asset and you're asking somebody to do something with it, um, I would suggest you add it in the CTA. I'm gonna paste my link here. This is my, my slide deck. You can choose the location of your button. You can add your company's um, hex code here if you wanna uh, brand that. You can choose where this will show up on the screen and whether or not you want it present throughout the whole Loom so they could click on it at any time or if you want it only to show at the end. Um, if your viewer is watching this on a mobile device, it will always only show at the end just because we have limited screen real estate add that CTA here, you will be able to track who has clicked on that. Um, so that is pretty handy too. Everyone's favorite feature is the trim and stitch feature. Now remember, if you want to record multiple looms and stitch them together, this is going to be your new best friend. You can also edit out anything that you want to cut out um, from your loom. So I might cut out some from the beginning. I might cut out some from the end. I might have said something you know, silly in the middle here. And I'll just take that section right on out and I can click add clip. This is gonna pop open for you any of your most recent looms. So I can select any of those here. You can reorder these around. And remember you can stitch up to 150 clips together, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. And you can also add clips from other people. So another use case for loom might be a birthday card or a work anniversary card or a goodbye message to somebody. We can have everybody on our team record a 20 second loom. As long as they give me their URLs, I can paste them here. I can stitch them all together into a loom supercut. Pretty cool. You can change the thumbnail on your loom on our paid plans. So um, it will typically default to this moving thumbnail preview of the first couple seconds from your loom. That's why it's important to smile and wave. Um, but on our paid plans, if you want, you can add your own thumbnail here. This would be great if you wanna polish up your loom with some branding, add a bumper, um, a logo or something of that nature. You have some additional video settings. Maybe you want to turn off the video animation. Perhaps you're going to be embedding this somewhere and it's going to be, you know, really distracting to have you keep waving over and over again. You can turn that off and it will just have a static image for you. You can also choose if you want to have your filler words removed. This is on our paid plan and you can choose whether or not you want these removed from just your text. So that's your transcript and your closed captions or from your text and your audio. I typically say leave them in your audio. It sounds less robotic, um, but you can definitely take them out of your text. You have some different options here for um, your audience, and I will tweak these depending on who I'm sending my Loom to. You can recommend a playback speed for them, and it's going to default uh, to that playback speed when they log in, so I typically like to do that. You can turn on or off people's ability to comment, record a reply, add an emoji reaction, download the Loom, stitch this into their own Looms, view your analytics, or view your transcript. When I am sharing these internally or with just you know, one customer or one audience, I'll leave all these on. If I'm sharing this with a broad audience, um, such as I'm sharing a webinar with 500 people, I turn some of these off just to keep the loom clean. Now for analytics, wanna give you guys a little peace of mind. If you turn off analytics, you, the recorder, you're still gonna be able to see the engagement insights, such as who's watched it and clicked the CTA. Your viewers just aren't gonna be able to see that. There's no comments on my Loom yet. My transcript is currently rendering. Um, it takes uh, just a few minutes to render and it will search for those filler words. All right, there we go. You can copy your transcript, paste it anywhere you're choosing if you also need to have um, text available. Um, these will show up in the closed captions to show you. Um, as a viewer is watching it, they can turn on closed captions. You can edit your transcript. So if somebody's name gets mispronounced, you can go ahead and edit that here. And of course, you can see any of the views and engagement. So when somebody watches your Loom, um, I'll show you on a, another Loom here what the engagement looks like. You're going to see who watched it, for how long, did they add a comment, did they add an emoji reaction, did they click my CTA?
Are there any questions on how to edit your loop? And we're going to move on to sharing. Feel free to drop those in the meeting chat. OK, my loom is polished up. It is ready to share out. I'm going to click on my share button here, and I have several different options available here. I can type in the name of somebody who's in my workspace with me. I can type in somebody's email address, and this will send an email to anybody um, that I share this with. So you can kind of skip the step and show you what happens here if I type in my personal email here. Um, you can skip the step of having to go into your email separately and you can send it directly from Loom and add a message that way. It's a really easy way to share. You can post it um, to Slack if you guys have your Slack integration set up and you can also um, share it in a space. I'll talk about spaces here a little more in a minute. You have some different social options if you want to share this on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Gmail. Let me show you what happens if I share in Gmail. It's going to create a moving thumbnail preview in my email for me. It's going to add that auto summary feature for you guys and the title. Um, and it has the word video in the subject line because uh, even having the word video in an email subject line is going to increase your open rate by about 6%. Uh, be sure you have your uh, Chrome extension downloaded in order for that Gmail integration to work properly for you. You can also manually embed um, with, our, with our code here if you want to embed that somewhere. And we have a Salesforce integration as well on our enterprise plan. You can also simply just copy this link, copy the URL, and rapid share it anywhere that you'd like. Slack message, email, website text message. You can choose if you want the video to be shared at a certain point in time, if you want to call people's attention to a certain point in the video. And you also have some additional privacy and security here. Um, if you want, you know, only people um, who you share this loom with explicitly to be able to view it, anybody at your workspace, public link, and then you have some different options uh, such as password protecting as well. If you have any questions on sharing your Loom, feel free to share those in the chat. We're going to move on and talk about viewing a Loom and how you can interact with the Loom that you receive. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my Loom library. Um, this is where all of my Loom videos live, 528 of them here. And I can see um, you know, who has watched my Looms. I can see how many comments have been added or how many emoji replies have been added. So let me go ahead and find a good example here uh, to show you all. Let's see one that has some good engagement on it here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's find a good one. Okay, here's a webinar that I did. Um, Loom 101 webinar. And remember that Zoom ingestion feature? It automatically uploaded my Zoom recording into a Loom for me. I shared this out with the participants afterwards. I added a couple hashtags here to make the Loom searchable within my um, organization. And here's what my engagement insights look like. 16 views um, across 12 unique viewers. I could, if I wanted, click specifically into each individual. I can see how long they watched it for. Um, their completion rate and their view times. Um, if somebody is not logged into Loom or they don't have a Loom account, it will show up as an anonymous view. And you can see uh, the overall um, engagement on that as well. So as your viewers are watching it, they can add any emoji of their choosing. That's right, any emoji. So you know maybe they want to add a lobster for some reason or a dumpling. They can do that with our uh, new feature that allows you to add any emoji of your choosing. And these are timestamps. You'll see exactly where Chris threw a hands up sign. Wonder what I was talking about at that point in time. Uh, your comments are also timestamped, so um, you can really tighten up the feedback cycle, especially um, in your product team. Um, if people are asking questions about something, they can ask it right there on the Loom. They don't have to add any context about what they're asking about because it's right there and timestamped. The last thing I want to show you guys today uh, before we open it up for questions is our Loom homepage. Now, if you create a Loom that you know, you want to bring visibility to um, across your organization or across your whole team, um, you might be sharing it not just by URL or with one individual, but posting it to your workspace or within a subspace um, 
for your particular team. So your Loom homepage, this is a place to come and stumble across um, any Looms that are being shared across your organization. You'll see Looms that are trending. You'll see um, news and Looms from individuals that you follow or people that you follow. You'll see which tags are trending and things that are newly shared in the spaces that you follow. For you guys as PMs, what I would recommend doing is creating a space. Now you might create a space for a particular feature or product. And anytime you want to communicate about that, you will share the Loom to that space. Individuals at your organization can follow that space and they're going to get a notification every time you post a new video within that space. So it's pretty neat. You hop back into my deck here. And I'm going to turn my Loom camera back on here. So I'm going to put my cam off for a couple minutes. I'm getting my three, two, one countdown here. And we're back. So to reiterate the most important best practices and tips and tricks, share yourself in your loom. Mistakes are human. It makes your looms much more engaging and fun to watch. Keep your looms under five minutes. Your engagement is going to be quite a bit higher. Try not to be a rambly loomer and get to the point quickly and be sure to link a CTA if you haven't asked for somebody. Don't forget to wave at the beginning to create that moving uh, thumbnail preview. You could move your camera bubble around as much as you want throughout your loom, make it larger or make it smaller. You have the pause button available if you need to take a minute to gather your thoughts, as well as the drawing tool, which is in our desktop application, as well as the seasonal frames also in the desktop app. And here is that really cool shortcut for throwing up some confetti. All right, with that, everybody, I would love to open it up for live questions. If anyone wants to come off mute at this time, let me know if there's anything else you guys are hoping to see today. You can also put additional questions into the chat. Did you mention earlier there would be recording? We are recording this session, Christy, and I will be um, converting this recording into a Loom, um, and I can work with the product school team uh, to make sure you get a copy. What other questions can I answer for you all? And Christy, one thing I will share with you as well, uh, we have an on-demand version of our Loom 101 webinar. I'm going to share that with you guys um, now in case you'd like to uh, just share that right away. I'm going to go to my loom.com slash support. We have a couple of on-demand um, webinars on our support page here. And the one you are looking for is Loom 101. Um, I also run a live webinar every single week here at Loom. So it's also on our, our support page here, support.loom.com, if you want to send anyone there. And here's the one you're looking for, Loom 101, where we do a full uh, demo and feature walk there. I just put that in the chat for you. And Veronica, I see a hand raised. Um, yeah, this actually, you might have kind of answered it by sharing this, but I was just curious um, if there were any tips or tricks on um, just how to encourage adoption to anyone who might be um, skeptical, like any coworkers or anything that might be skeptical of Loom or just like, you know, if Loom is not already like incorporated into the workplace. Yeah, that's actually a great question. I'm going to share a resource with you guys, um, which is our change management toolkit. And this is great for if you are thinking about, you know, trying to get Loom launched at your organization. Really, the key to uh, having this be effective is getting people to share and share looms and get views. Um, people who have this kind of aha moment and habit moment um, within their first couple weeks are really likely to adopt loom. So I'm gonna link this in the chat for you. Um, this is a step-by-step -step guide about how to uh, help your organization to adopt the tool. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.